Good afternoon, my name is Marika Gudjer and I'm a group leader at the Center for Molecular Medicine Norway, NCMM, at the University of Oslo. We are focused on developing tools to model gene regulatory networks, integrate these with different omics data types to better understand what drives cancer and complex disease development. Today I'll be presenting a method we call PUMA that models microRNA gene regulatory networks, and we've used this method to understand tissue-specific regulation by microRNAs. Human cells carry out many different common processes. For example, um, processes that define cellular structure that influence cell growth and survival. However, cells also exhibit unique functions that help define their phenotype. These have traditionally been measured by tissue-specific gene expression or, for example, protein abundance. However, expression data alone does not capture the variety of processes that distinguish different tissues. Gene regulatory processes are very important. They alter which genes are expressed and also control the extent of that expression. Disruption of gene regulatory processes can drive disease, and that's why we believe it's important to model gene regulatory networks for uh, understanding tissue-specific gene regulation. There's many types of gene regulatory processes. Uh, the most uh, well-known ones are probably transcription factors that form complexes and then bind to DNA moti binding motifs in the promoters of their target genes and thereby influencing their expression, and microRNAs, small non-coding RNAs that can bind to the 3' UTR of its tar their target transcripts and thereby cause the transcript to be degraded and or inhibited uh, for translation. With a gene regulatory network, what we want to do is to model all potential interactions between all potential regulators and their target genes. So if we know that an interaction is happening in a specific cell, we would draw an edge in this network. And ideally, these networks are not as simple as shown in this figure. Ideally, the gene regulatory network is genome-wide and contains weights for each possible microRNA target gene pack. These networks can be modeled through experiments, for example, through ChIP-seq or luciferase reporter assays, but um, these are kind of difficult to do high throughput, especially in tissues. So gene regulatory networks can also be modeled computationally. And I'll be specifically talking about two methods today, PANDA that models transcription regulation, and PUMA that is um, uh, based on PANDA that models post-transcription regulation by microRNAs. But before going into these methods, let's talk a little bit more about why um, we, I believe modeling microRNA target gene regulation is important in, in gene regulatory networks. Well, there's over 2,000 microRNAs in the human genome. And these are thought to regulate most protein coding genes. More than 60% of protein coding genes have conserved binding sites for microRNAs. Each gene can have multiple binding sites for microRNAs, and microRNAs can act additively. They may bind to many non canonical regulatory sites as well, with maybe lower affinities, and they can act together. So this results in a complex network of interacting elements. Most computational methods estimate inverse correlation between microRNA expression levels and mRNA expression levels. Other methods start with microRNA target predictions and then color node weights based on the expression levels and then look whether a specific microRNA and mRNA are being uh, inversely correlated. The difficulty with this method is that correlation does not necessarily mean regulation. And also these approaches cannot learn new edges. Um, with a new edge, what I mean is, for example, if um, a target prediction algorithm does not predict a specific um, um, target uh, of a microRNA, these um, uh, edges will not be, uh, these edges cannot be learned. Well, Puma does not rely on microRNA mRNA correlations and can learn these new edges. And it does this through looking into patterns of co-expression of the target genes. So if a microRNA is, is known to uh, regulate two predicted, uh, um, um, is known to regulate two uh, mRNA transcripts, here shown with blue arrows, and these transcripts correlate with uh, another transcript, um, Puma will be able to capture this uh, novel microRNA mRNA edge. So how does this work? Uh, well, Puma is based on Panda, so I'm uh, going to show you both methods in this slide. Um, Puma and Panda start with a regulatory prior, for example, a transcription vector motif scan or a microRNA target predictions, and integrates this with protein protein interactions between transcription vectors and target gene co expression information. Puma Panda specifically calculates the responsibility of a transcription vector to regulate the target genes. Um, and the idea behind this is that two transcription vectors are known to form a complex from the PPI data. And we know from the regulatory prior that one of the transcription vectors also regulate the target gene we might increase the evidence a little bit that the uh, second transcription factor also regulates this target gene. Puma and Panda both calculate the availability of the target genes. Um, this is measured as follows. If we know from the regulatory prior, for example, that a microRNA can regulate a specific target gene, and this target gene is 
correlated with some other target gene, we um, increase the likelihood that the microRNA also replicates the other target gene. This is, uh, these measures are used to update the initial uh, regulatory network, and this is then done many, many times until the network converges and we have found agreement between the three different data types above. PUMA stands for PANDA using microRNA associations. Um, and with PUMA, we made some critical adjustments to the initial cooperativity network, so the PPI here in this slide um, in PANDA, and as well as its update function to account for the different mechanisms of microRNA regulation. So transcription factors act in complexes, but microRNAs do not. Therefore, we, PUMA does not uh, update any PPI interactions except for self interactions connected to microRNAs. The output of both PUMA and PANDA networks um, is a condition-specific aggregate network that is bipartite, we have regulators and the targets, is complete, so genome-wide, and it is weighted. We have likelihoods of regulation between the microRNA and its target gene. Let's apply PUMA to uh, real data to understand tissue-specific regulation by microRNAs. We use data from the Genotype Tissue Expression Project, or GTEx, um, because it's a very rich data set. It has RNA-seq data from about 53 different tissue sites for about 500 postmortem individuals and over 10,000 samples. We um, analyzed these data before. We used tissue aware filtering with a method called YARN that merged several very related tissues. So we end up with uh, having 38 specific tissues. And we previously used this in different types of network analysis, but we had not looked into microRNA networks yet. So to model microRNA networks based on this data, we integrated um, these expression signals with regulatory priors. We decided to base these on target predictions, um, and we used two widely used resources, TargetScan and Miranda, and we picked these two mainly because of the user friendly less and also the, the option to download the entire data set. We found, um, as has, is widely known, that target predictions between different, these two different resources are actually very different. So while there was an overlap of about 400,000 canonical edges, so edges identified in both target scan and Miranda, there were some edges that were only predicted in target scan and some edges that were only predicted by Miranda. And we mainly wanted to model Puma networks on both of these different resources to see if we could still capture consistent tissue specificity signals and these networks model with two different priors. So we integrated gene expression data with microRNA and mRNA target predictions and, and, uh, using Puma and models 38 networks for based on target scan and 38 networks based on Miranda. These networks are available on Zenodo, so if you're interested in analyzing them, please check this link. We then identified tissue specific edges by comparing the edge weights in one tissue to the edge weight across all tissues. Um, so we basically took the edge weight, compared it to the median edge weight across all tissues, and divided it by the interparts range. We call this a tissue-specific score, or tissue specificity score. If the score was larger than two, we call it an edge tissue specific. Importantly, edges can be specific to more than one tissue, we call this multiplicity. So if there's very low variability and then very high expression in certain tissues, um, uh, um, for example, in this figure over here, an edge can be um, specific to, for example, two tissues. Here we visualize um, the different tissue specificity uh, the order, the number of edges and their multiplicity scores that we identified in the targets networks modeled on target scan and the networks modeled on Miranda. We identified about nine, uh, 3 million um, tissue specific edges using, uh, in both collections of networks. And we found that the patterns uh, across the different tissues of, of the number of tissue specific edges as well as their multiplicities were very similar between the target scan and the Miranda network. We then looked into the tissue specificity scores and correlated them between these two different collections of network models. We found that for most tissues, the, uh, they correlated pretty well or moderately well. The results were stable across cross-validations. And importantly, we found the highest correlations for edges predicted in both priors, the canonical edges in this box plot, indicating that potentially compendium-like uh, approaches that merge different target prediction algorithms might be very helpful in identifying more accurate edges using Puma. We wanted to look into the tissue-specific regulation of biological processes. And to show this, um, let's change these networks a little bit and let's visualize them in adjacency matrices. Here we visualize the microRNAs on the x-axis and their target genes on the y-axis. Now, what if we're interested in the specific gene for example, microRNA 517C and its uh, processes this regulates in brain. We can compare all of the edge weights connected to this microRNA in brain 
to the edge weights across all tissues with a formula that is very similar to the one I've shown you before. We then run GSEC enrichment analysis on these and identify pathways that are highly specifically regulated by this microRNA in brain. And these include, for example, synaptic transmission and transmission of nerve impulse. Obviously, we're not only interested in this specific microRNA, but we would like to do this for all 643 microRNAs in our data set. When we do this, we kind of get a similar picture. We visualize all the microRNAs on the x-axis, and then um, high regulation is shown in red here. And if you can see from this uh, heat map in the center, there is a cluster of microRNAs that regulates very important, uh, important pathways in the brain, such as synaptic transmission or regulation of neurogenesis. Obviously, we're not only interested in brain, but we actually would like to do this for all 38 tissues. So we repeated this analysis for each tissue. And then we were interested in seeing whether we could actually capture tissue-specific microRNA targeting profiles with uh, both fibers and see if they're reproducible. So we compared all of these tissue-specific targeting profiles that we obtained from the networks built on target scanning Miranda, and we compared them using a similarity score, Pearson correlation, uh, and we found that most of these scores were significant and were higher than zero. So they were um, positive, they showed positive correlation with a median Pearson correlation of about 0 0.66. In a uh, negative control, so an analysis where we compared um, targeting profiles between different tissues instead of between the two different priors, we obviously don't see any correlation. We further wanted to look into this uh, and, and identify shared tissue-specific targeting patterns across the tissues. And to do this, we clustered the significant results from the gene set enrichment analysis. This resulted in about 60 communities in each um, of these data sets. Um, and nine of these communities regulated or targeted five uh, or more than five co terms or gene ontology regulatory processes. We used word clouds to indicate the functions that were associated with each community and found that they were very consistent. And for example, some of the biological processes that are regulated by microRNAs in a tissue-specific manner in multiple tissues were immune system, translation initiation, intracellular signaling, and protein transport. Well, an important uh, take-home message from these last two slides is that Puma discovers tissue-specific regulation by microRNAs pretty consistently, even though there are some inconsistencies between the different target prediction resources. We built a research of microRNA tissue-specific functions, and we hosted this in a Shiny app. The link can be found here on the bottom right. We then looked at overrepresentation of specific nodes. We looked, did this for the microRNA shown on the left, for uh, biological processes shown in the center, and for the different tissues. The top microRNAs um, were actually associated with cancer in the same tissues in which they regulate tissue-specific processes. And so this indicates the deregulation of this microRNAs in um, in these specific tissues might actually drive cancer. Let's take a look at MER 5.7c, our favorite top microRNA. It regulates tissue-specific processes in several tissues. For example, in thyroid, it regulates a bunch of immune system processes, while in the brain, it regulates neurogenesis. If you're interested in looking into these um, tissue-specific processes in our Shiny app, you can basically select a microRNA, you can select a tissue and then play around with the significant fold change and consistency thresholds to identify tissue-specific regulatory pathways. Finally, we wanted to see whether these overrepresented microRNAs were highly expressed. They were, but they were actually not specifically expressed in the tissue in which they regulate these processes. And this is very important because it means that microRNA and mRNA co-expression networks while they can be potentially informative in identifying co-regulatory patterns between these two types of nodes, they may actually miss some microRNAs that are not specifically expressed or not differentially expressed. Puma can obviously identify these microRNAs. Finally, um, we, to get a little bit more relevance on the disease, um, we wanted to integrate this with Murdy SNP. This is a database that contains disease-associated SNPs in microRNA binding sites. So basically, this beta database contains genes, microRNAs um, um, that are associated to these binding sites, and then the tissues um, that are associated to the disease. To assess the similarity between merely SNP genes and Puma predicted microRNA functions, we basically took the top tissue specific function from Puma, looked at the genes that were, played a role in this function, and then compared the GO terms between the two. We found overlap uh, in these GO terms for most of these. Um, of these edges in MERDI-SNP, 
and uh, top average tissue specific pathways included genes with tissue specific disease that are snipped in their food from UTR. And so examples from the top 10 associations were, for example, MER429, um, which was predicted by Puma to play in a role in endothelial cell migration in coronary artery. Well, this had a, a SNP uh, in the microRNA binding site uh, of the gene uh, BGF alpha, which is the gene that plays an important role in entry genesis. So Puma networks can identify disease-related genes and processes. And disrupting these, um, um, so uh, these processes are probably important for disease, tissue homeostasis, and disrupting these uh, edges can potentially perturb these processes, thereby influencing disease. So to conclude, we developed Puma, a message passing algorithm to model complex patterns of regulation by microRNAs. Puma consistently captures important tissue specific microRNA regulatory processes. And we could identify patterns of regulation that were associated with a wide variety of tissue specific processes. Disease SNPs and microRNA binding sites associated with Puma predicted tissue specific functions of these microRNAs. Well, obviously, there are some limitations to Puma, as with all network inference algorithms, um, it requires a large number of transcriptomic samples and averages over the population. Fortunately, we recently developed a method called Linus that can extract networks for individual samples. So in the future, we would like to combine Puma with Linus um, in order to identify patient-specific edges that might be deregulated. Finally, I'd like to share with you some exciting news. Together with two of my co-authors, Kimberly Glass and Maud Fanny, I um, am editing a Frontiers research topic that focuses on genome-wide networks and that welcomes both new methods and application studies. The deadline for submission is October 22nd, and we'd be very uh, delighted to get your contributions. We're also looking for postdocs. Um, we will open a position for the Marie Curie Scienza Fellowship Program in August, and we will have two uh, open positions for postdoctoral fellows later in 2021. With this, I would like to thank uh, the Puma co-authors, Maud Pangi, Alexander Marin, John Quackenbush, and Kimberly Glass. I'm also very grateful to um, the Puma Netsu contributors. Netsu is a repository for network inference algorithms, as well as my current group. If you're interested in any of these tools, please take a look at our group's website. And Puma has been recently accepted in bioinformatics, so I put a link here to the manuscript as well. I'm also very grateful to our funding sources, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>